We'll go ahead and get started. So again, like I was saying before, so today what we're going to be talking about is ovulation test strips. So um, there's a few different kinds that you may have seen, and we're going to walk through the differences, how they work, how to use them, um, because they're a super cost-effective way to be much more accurate um, about your intercourse timing if you are trying to conceive and trying to conceive quickly. So these are your best friend's little secret weapons. And you know, an important thing is, is these strips are so helpful. They give us so much information, um, but you don't need the big expensive, um, you know, fancy ones. These are, these are awesome. So let's see, let's get started. I have a couple questions from people. Um, but I'm going to answer those, I think, at the end. And I think I'm just going to walk you through the basics for starters, okay? So first of all, what is luteinizing hormone? What are these strips even testing for? Um, so these LH strips are different than a pregnancy test, okay? Your pregnancy test tests something called HCG. That tells you you're pregnant. You only make that hormone if you're pregnant. Um, these are testing for luteinizing hormone, and this is what we're talking about today. So luteinizing hormone is a hormone that is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland in your brain um, and it goes down to your ovaries and it tells your ovaries to release an egg. Um, so the way this kind of messaging system works, we talked about this briefly last week, <clears throat> is that that first half of your cycle or the beginning of your cycle, that estrogen is going to build and build and build and that estrogen gets up to a certain point, which guess what makes your beautiful fertile cervical mucus, um, but that estrogen goes to your brain at a high level and it says, hi brain, release luteinizing hormone, let's get this going. So then your brain starts to release luteinizing hormone in different amounts until finally it hits this big peak and that LH comes to the ovaries and it tells the ovaries to pop out that egg. And then after that LH surges, you usually ovulate within 24 hours. <clears throat> So knowing this information, we're able to time intercourse around this or avoid intercourse if people are trying to not conceive. Um, and it just gives, it's such an easy way to give us so much insight into when that little egg is going to pop out and be um, present. So um, the first thing you have to do is calculate your day to start testing. So all of these tests, Strips, when you get it from Easy at Home or Premom, same thing, they're sister companies. Um, they come with a little handout inside and they're going to help you find out kind of when to start testing. So on average, if you have a 28-day cycle, day five of your cycle is the first day that you're going to start testing with those LH strips. It seems early in your cycle. Typically, you'll ovulate around day 15. Let's just say if everybody had a perfect 28-day cycle, we'll just tie it, which is so uncommon, by the way, so don't feel weird if you don't fall into that category. We're just gonna use that for example. So day five is when we're gonna start testing. So what's important when we're testing for luteinizing hormones is that we're testing at the same time every day. Um, additionally, we also wanna make sure that we're keeping water intake consistent day to day uh, because if that urine is more or less diluted, it can change our results. So I typically say, um, even when I've used LH test strips in the past, what I'll do is I know that I'm drinking my 100 ounces of water a day, um, and I make sure that I'm doing my LH test strips at two in the afternoon after I've had my three um, like 20 ounce water bottles. So I know that every day, yes, I pee a lot. <laughs> I like to stay hydrated, um, but I know that my urine is gonna be about the same concentration every day. So. And that can be a super hel helpful tool in kind of keeping track of those LH um, levels. Um, so let's let's see a little bit. So how these work, um, you know, you don't like, let's pretend this is one of those fancy, you know, LH strips you pee on. No, you don't necessarily need those. So these are, um, I'll show you. It's kind of like a science experiment. They're just these little easy peasy strips. Um, you don't need anything fancy. And just because they're not, you know, in big crazy packaging does not mean they're less effective. They give us so much information. Um, so you can urinate into like a little cup, a shot glass. Um, sometimes I'll use one of these little um, glass ramekins. You're just gonna dip. Uh, there's a little black line on it you can see. Um, you don't wanna go past that level, but you're gonna dip until you see some um, dye some colors start to rise in the top of this, okay? 
So that's how you do it. You don't need to oversaturate it. You're just going to dip up to that black line until you see that dye start to rise here above. And then you can take it out and you can set it down on your table. Then, this is an important part and a lot of people have this question. Um, so there's two different types of ovulation test kits. There's quantitative ovulation projector kits and then your, there's your like traditional LH strip. Um, the difference between the two of them and I'll show you. So these are the quantitative and these are the regular ones. Um, these are going to show a test to control ratio. So you are going to get two different colored lines. Um, and that line will darken as there's more and more luteinizing hormone pre present. Whereas um, what's cool about these quantitative strips that you also can get um, is they tell you how much luteinizing hormone is present, which is really cool. So either way, using the Premom phone app, you can scan both of these in. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial. So you can open your app and you can click on your um, test tab. Then you can um, just, there's a timer at the very bottom. I did, a lot of people don't know this. Timer and you can set that for five minutes. Um, so these ones are three to five minutes. These are at least five minutes. So I just say good rule of thumb. Set your timer for five minutes and you're good to go. Um, set your timer. You can hit start. When it's done, that means it's time to take your picture. Um, if you miss it by a couple minutes, not a huge deal, but after 10 minutes, you are gonna wanna redo your um, results. You're not gonna wanna read them then. So 10 minutes is your max, but five minutes is what you wanna set your timer for. Then really easy, you just hit the button that says add test result, and you can upload a photo, but you can also take one automatically. And what's great is it zeroes in right on those two lines. And um, depending on whether you're using the easy at home, traditional luteinizing hormone test, or the pre-mom um, quantitative luteinizing hormone test, they're gonna give you, um, the easy at home is gonna give you a test to control ratio number. So you actually get a numerical value, which is super helpful. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, you guys, you know, we talk about line eyes with HCG tests, but we also get line eyes with LH. Like, is this darker than yesterday or not? So. It kind of takes the guesswork out of it and just really helps you to control um, and compare all those days. And then the pre-mom is cool because it actually quantifies that luteinizing hormone level um, and it tells you exactly how much luteinizing hormone is present. Again, it also is darkening in the same manner. Um, so that's what's really cool about that. And I do recommend using the timer feature so you don't forget about your strips um, and you're making sure you're reading them at the right time. What else? Um, yeah, so that's what I, so these, so these easy at home luteinizing hormone tests, these are semi quantitative and then these, um, pre -mom tests are quantitative. They're actually looking at the amount of luteinizing hormone present, both hugely, hugely impactful, um, for figuring out what's going on in your cycle. A lot of people, um, the reason a lot of people end up using these quantitative tests are maybe they're just getting really light lines and they don't actually know how much luteinizing hormone is around. You can use these for a cycle or two to really get a good idea of how much luteinizing hormone your body's producing. So either way, same thing. We are going to see the same cycle pattern. And what we're looking for is these, this, these LH strips. Um, there's two lines. They're going, they're going to get darker and darker and darker and darker. And then there's going to come a day where they get lighter. And what this means is you hit your peak day and then now you're back down. And we really want to watch for that slow rise and then that peak. That peak is your luteinizing hormone surge. And this means that this is what's telling your ovaries that it's time to ovulate. Um, so we want to be timing intercourse for sure right around this. Um, so this is another thing that I like to go over and emphasize is sperm live for four to seven days. They're real troopers when you think about it, honestly. They're down to hang out, swim around, get where they need to be, and hang out for that fertilized egg. <clears throat> Eggs, on the other hand, only live for around 24, maybe 36 hours. Um, so it's really important for sperm actually to be around in the uterus, near the fallopian tube openings, um, before that ovulation actually happens so that it can meet that fertilized egg. Um, what else? Okay, so if we're looking at actual amounts, I do like to talk about this because a lot of people are like, well, how much LH hormone do I have to have? What's normal? <clears throat> and unfortunately, there's no good answer to that question because everybody's different. 
Some people can ovulate with lower LH levels and some people it's super high. Um, but in the follicular phase, the first part of your cycle, your luteinizing hormone, it goes from 1.68 to 15. IU per liter and then mid cycle like when we're getting that peak you're between 21 and 56 um, so these quantitative test strips test all the way up to 80 so just because you don't reach 80 doesn't necessarily mean you didn't ovulate it just you just are a lower end of the LH there's not a magic number for <clears throat> LH it's kind of different for everybody um, we covered how long sperm live um, so let's talk about intercourse timing then right so again we know sperm around we know we want to have them around before ovulation occurs. We want to have sperm around before that LH peaks. Um, so research supports having intercourse five days before ovulation and ovulation day. Those are statistically the best days that you can have intercourse um, in order to conceive. So again, we're trying to get, um, once we start to see that LH start to rise, it's a really good time to start um, having intercourse. And for sure, when we see that surge, let's you know, definitely stack the deck in our favor and make sure we're having intercourse on the day of that peak day. Um, also, I do recommend two days after as well, uh, just in case maybe you missed the LH peak and it did come a day later than you thought. Um, continue it out for another like two days after. As far as every day, every other day, every doctor seems to have a different opinion on it. Um, if quantity of sperm is an issue, um, then yes, every other day does make sense. But in a really good semen analysis panel, um, there's good count, good volume. Um, it's perfectly fine to have intercourse every day. So um, that's up to you. And of course, totally respect your doctor's opinion and what they think as well for you. You can never be wrong when it's your body. You know best. <laughs> um, the one last thing I wanted to talk about is a rapid surge versus a gradual surge. So some people, um, I would say the majority fit into the gradual surge pattern. So the luteinizing hormone is slowly rising for one to six days and the peak happens somewhere in between like these one to six days. Other people can have something called a rapid surge. And this is where luteinizing hormone is only elevated for like a couple hours in a day. So it's really hard for those people to track when their LH spike is. So if you do LH strips for a month, you're not seeing that peak. Um, it never came. Um, it's worthwhile the next cycle to consider testing two times a day to see if within the day you did a did a LH peak without you even noticing. Um, so I would just do try, give that a cycle around using LH strips two times a day to help catch that rapid rise. Um, so that's a little tip for you. Okay, so those are the basics of the strips. I hope that's helpful just seeing how something so simple as this strip can give us so much value and so much information. Um, the quantitative ones are less than a dollar a day. These, I mean, gosh, are, are hardly anything. So you don't have to feel guilty about testing. And I always say test, don't guess. You know, use this information. The more data you can collect, the more you can know what's going on in your cycle um, and the more we can kind of tap in and, and figure out how to conceive. Um, okay, so this is someone's question. After dipping the strip, when do you scan it in the app to avoid a false reading? Perfect. So we talked about this already. So you're going to, after dipping the strip, you're going to wait to scan it three to five minutes for the um, regular ovulation test. And you're going to wait five minutes for the quantitative test. Of course, read the instructions on your strips to make sure that this applies to you. Um, but that's typically what it is. And then don't read those tests after 10 minutes. You're not going to get an accurate um, measurement at that point. Okay, and then the last question, do faint lines denote ovulation at all? So this is a good question, um, and this, this would be someone I would say go ahead and give the quantitative LH strips a, a cycle and see what you see because um, some people do have faint lines and they still get a spike and a surge and they still ovulate. Um, if you're concerned about how much LH is present, that's when the quantitative can really come in and see what amounts you're actually getting. Uh, in addition to that, though, if you're having those faint lines and you're wondering if you're ovulating, that's when you really have to go and rely on your ovulation confirmation technique. So that's checking your basal body temperature, that's checking your cervical mucus. In addition to that LH peak to make sure everything's kind of adding up. 
Are you getting that basal body temperature spike that confirms progesterone is pregnant present uh, because you ovulated? That corpus luteum is around secreting progesterone, right? So we want to just confirm that. Also, cervical mucus, did it get nice and slippery? Did you get that fertile mucus? Um, so those are other signs your body's telling you. Uh, you know, the cervical mucus tells you where your estrogen is at. Your luteinizing hormone tells you where your ovulation is at. Your basal body temperature tells you where your progesterone levels are at. So see, it's really cool. It's, it's science. You can read in your body symptoms and it can tell you so much about what's going on. Um, so the one thing I would say is, yeah, consider trying the quantitative test if you have faint lines and make sure that you're tracking basal body temperature and cervical mucus. Um, to make sure that you're confirming ovulation. If you're not ovulating, then you gotta dig deeper, talk with your doctor and figure out what's causing you not to ovulate. Also, this is somebody that may have a rapid rise. So if you're just getting faint lines every day and you're not getting that spike, consider doing a cycle by testing two times a day and see if you're just that person that has one day of that rapid rise of LH peak. Um, and make sure you're not missing that LH surge. So those are kind of the troubleshooting techniques I would do with that guy. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it as far as uh, ovulation tester goes, but they're cost effective and they're so accurate and they can just really help you give so much um, information about your cycle. So I'm a big fan of them. They're an easy tool. I love data. It's so great the way you can upload everything into your app. And then it's also not only do you have pictures of everything and you can go back and look at past cycles, but then it's going to graph everything for you, uh, which is super nice. So you can see your luteinizing hormones slowly increasing. You can see your basal body temperature spiking. It's just, it's so cool to see all this information next to each other. So that's about everything. I um, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And of course, leave any questions. And we will see you next week. Take care.